Friends, before the release of Scream 6, you can watch the full story of the Scream series in this video. To make one video I had to watch 5 films. So please, if you like the video, then definitely subscribe to the channel. So the story of Scream 1996 begins with a girl named Casey Becker. One night she is waiting for her boyfriend Steve Orth. She gets a call from an unknown number, and some man asks her about her favorite horror movie. She tries to avoid the matter but the man tells her that he can see her right now. Outside the house, Casey sees her boyfriend Steve in a half-dead condition, and she is very scared. Casey is asked some movie-related questions by a stranger and kills Steve when she gives the wrong answer. Casey tries to call the police, but the killer enters the house wearing a ghost face costume and kills her too. In the next scene, we see Sidney Prescott, a teenager. At midnight her boyfriend Billy comes to meet her. She is struggles with the first anniversary of her mother Maureen's rape and murder. Sidney hasn't recovered from this shock till date. For this reason, the relationship between her and Billy is not good. Today her father is going out of the station for some work and Sydney has to stay at home alone for a few days. The next day, the news of Casey and Steve's murder spread throughout the city. After killing Casey, the killer removed her internal organs as well, which has scared the town of Woodsboro. Sydney and Billy's friends in college, Stu, Randy, and Tatum discuss the murder and everyone suspects each other. The next night, Sydney doesn't want to be alone at home so she calls Tatum. While waiting for her, Sydney gets a phone call from the killer, who taunts her over her mother's death. Sydney checks out and the killer breaks in. Sydney runs upstairs, confronting the killer. Then Billy comes to meet her through her bedroom window and she tells him everything. But seeing the phone in Billy's hand, she gets scared and thinks that he is the killer. Sydney gets him caught and Tatum's brother Dewey is in the police as well. Then he safely brings Sydney and Tatum home. But at Tatum's home, Sydney gets a phone call from the killer again. And he reveals that Sydney, like her mother's killer, has caught the wrong man this time too. We learn that she got Cotton Weary arrested for her mother's death. But Cotton said that he was having an affair with Maureen and that he had not killed her. While checking the phone records, it turns out that the killer's call came from Sydney's father's number, and Billy is innocent. There is no trace of Sydney's father and the police start looking for him. On the other hand, reporter Gail wrote a book on what happened to Sydney's mother, and Sydney was declared a liar by the entire media. Gail believes that someone else killed Maureen, not Cotton. Now, after last night's call, Sydney is beginning to feel the same way. At school, Sydney apologizes to Billy, but they have a fight. Because according to Billy, Sydney should have moved on by now since the death of her mom whereas the killer continues his murders and kills the school principal as well. Randy thinks that this killing is being done by a killer, who follows the plot of horror movies seriously and suspects Billy. That night they organize a party that Dewey and Gail also attend. The killer isolates Tatum and kills her at the party. And during the party, Billy and Sydney make out and she decides to move on from her mom's death. But then the killer attacks Billy from behind. Sydney escapes to save her life and the killer kills her friends one by one while chasing her. Gail and Dewey get attacked as well. Sydney somehow manages to save her life and runs inside the house. Both Randy and Stu blame each other for the killing in front of her. Just then, Billy comes from behind and reveals that he is the real killer. Stu was actually involved with Billy, and Sydney asks him why he did this. He reveals that Sydney's mother, Maureen, was having an affair with his father due to which his mother left him and went away. So, he first killed Maureen and then framed Sydney. Billy says that he has become a psycho killer because of that. Billy and Stu had also kidnapped Sydney's father. He was talking to the victim by changing his voice from his phone. Billy is also about to kill Sydney, but Gail arrives who has somehow survived. Together they kill Billy and in the end, Dewey's life is also saved. The story of Scream 1996 ends here. The next film in this franchise is Scream 2 which was released in 1997. So a year has passed since the murders here in Woodsboro Town. And reporter Gale has written another book on that incident. A movie named Stabovision has been made in this book. During the screening of which a killer wearing ghost face kills two people. Their names were Maureen and Phil Stevens and they were students at Windsor College in Ohio. The killer is trying to imitate the original Woodsboro killing. Sydney and Randy study in the same college. 
Randy is a horror movie buff as we have seen in the previous movie, and in college, they are again discussing these murders. Randy suspects that someone is trying to make a sequel to the original murders. He gets into an argument with a boy named Mickey on this matter. Gail and Dewey also come along to investigate, and everyone contemplates what could be the killer's next move. On the other hand, Cotton Weary is released as Maureen's murders were committed by Billy, and he wants to do an interview with Sidney to clear his name and gain fame. But Sidney does not agree with this. Gail is being followed by Debbie Salt, a local journalist who is a big fan of hers. Debbie asks her about the Woodsboro murders, but Gail refuses to say anything. Now during a senior's party, the killer kills a girl named Casey, and then attacks Sydney, but Sydney's boyfriend Derek saves her. Sydney's friends Mickey and Dewey turn their suspicions on Derek, because apart from Sydney, there was only one who survived the killer. Whereas the killer attacks Sydney during drama rehearsal, and here too Sydney sees Derek instead of Mickey, and his suspicion again goes on him. Later, the killer kills Randy, whose death disturbs Sydney, Gail, and Dewey. Sydney gets a message from the killer that he will kill her tonight. Seeing this, Sydney gets disturbed. Cotton once again forces her for an interview, saying that because of her he had to go to jail on false charges. Seeing his aggressive behavior, the suspicion of Sydney and the police starts shifting to Cotton as well. That night, Gail and Dewey try to track down the killer through the video footage. Only then does the killer attack them. Gail survives but Dewey is badly wounded. After escaping from here, Gail finds Cotton outside whose hand is stained with blood. Now she starts to feel that he is the killer. She tells this to Debbie and asks her to call the local police. On the other hand, the police want to take Sydney to a safe place, so that she can stay safe tonight. Before leaving, Sydney's boyfriend Derek tells her to take care of herself. But on the way, their car is attacked and the policemen are killed. Sydney manages to escape back inside the college campus and the killer follows her. In the drama room, Sydney finds Derek tied up, and from behind the killer also comes. Here it is revealed that the killer is Mickey, who is killing everyone by being obsessed with a horror movie, as the original took place in Woodsboro. Not only this, but Debbie is also accompanying him, who is not a local journalist but Billy's mother. Debbie instigates Mickey to commit murders, so that in the end, by putting all the blame on Sydney, she can take revenge for her son's death. But Sydney shows Debbie his real self, saying that she made Billy a psychopathic killer, because she had gone somewhere leaving him alone. Debbie gets mad after hearing this reality and shoots Mickey, and in response, he shoots Gabe. The final face down takes place between Sydney and Debbie. Debbie almost kills Sydney, but then Cotton saves her by shooting at Debbie. Gail regains consciousness and by now Mickey has regained consciousness as well. Gail and Sydney finally kill her by riddling with bullets. In the end scene, Dewey is also taken to the hospital, and we see a romantic relationship formed between them. The story of Scream 2 ends here. The next film of this franchise is Scream 3, which was released in the year 2000, almost three years later. The story of this film begins with Cotton Weary. The killer calls him in his old style and asks for the address of Sidney Prescott. When he refuses, a man dressed as Ghostface kills Cotton as well as Christine, Cotton's girlfriend. Before leaving, the killer leaves a picture of Maureen Prescott, Sidney's mother, at the crime scene. Here we learn that Gail has also written a book on the Windsor College murders, and she has become a top generalist. Dewey, on the other hand, is working as a technical advisor on the sets in Hollywood where Stab 3 movie is being made which is obviously based on Sydney's story and Gail's book. Sydney now lives behind security in an isolated house outside town, and as a women's helpline expert works with a fake name, the news of Cotton's murder reaches Gail and Sydney. Gail comes to New York where the killer has committed two murders earlier. The cast and crew of Stab 3 are in a panic as they fear that the killer might be after them. Gail talks to Dewey about this. Here we come to know they have broken up an estrangement between them, but in this case, both work together. He tells that a few days ago, from this film set, some man had asked the police for Sidney's file, so that he could know everything about him. He thinks that a killer is a person related to the movie Stab 3. Gale shares that the photo of Sidney's mother found at the crime scene is not available on the internet. In fact, 
This photo is of Maureen Prescott after she had moved away from Woodsboro for two years. No one knows where she went at that time. He notices that the picture is from the same Hollywood set where Stab 3 is currently being shot. In this connection, they check the archived photos of the studio, where they learn that Maureen was working as an actress in Hollywood for two years. Then she kept her name as Rena Reynolds. She used to work in horror movies and after two years something happened, she left everything and went back to Woodsboro. On the other hand, the killer calls actress Sarah, who is working in Stab 3, in the voice of film director Roman and asks her to meet him and then kills her. The police take Roman for questioning in connection with this murder. And the rest of the cast also starts getting scared, because now the killer is killing them, in the order of the story of Stab 3. Meanwhile, Sydney starts having dreams of her mother who calls her. The killer threatens Sydney that if she doesn't come forward, more deaths will happen. Sydney comes back to New York in fear. Randy's sister visits Sydney, Gail, and Dewey in New York. She shows them a videotape that Randy left behind before he died. This video was made by Randy thinking that he too may die in the future, and this killing may repeat again. And in that case, his friends will need his expertise. Randy says in the video that if the killing happened for the third time, then it would mean that killer is trying to make a trilogy. Gail and Dewey visit the producer of the movie studio who made movies with Maureen in the 70s. The producer tells that Maureen had an illicit relationship with some people in the industry, but everything happened as per her wish. She wants to be famous in Hollywood, so she took this step. Later, when she could not handle it all, she went back to Woodsboro. After knowing everything, they leave to meet the police, and only then on the way do they get a call from the killer. He tells them in Sydney's voice to return to the producer's house. As soon as they enter the house, the killer attack Gail, Dewey, and the cast members in the producer's house, and traps Gail and Dewey in the end. He calls Sydney there and also threatens to kill Gail and Dewey. Sydney comes there and sets them free. Once again the game of chasing begins between killer and Sydney. This time, the killer turns out to be Roman who is also the director of Stab 3. Roman reveals that Maureen was actually not only Sydney's mother but also his mother. He is Maureen's only son who was abandoned. Maureen left Hollywood and him after what the producer had done to her. But after growing up, he went to meet her so that he could get his mother's love. But Maureen refused to accept him. That's why he made a film about Maureen and Billy's father's affair and sent that film to Billy. That made Billy so mad that he killed Maureen and became a psycho killer. Now Roman is killing these people by changing his voice and Sydney has also been called here. So that he can blame her for killing the producer and everyone else and his revenge can be complete. Here a scuffle takes place between Sydney and Roman. Sydney obviously once again manages to kill the killer. Gail and Dewey also come together at the end of the film and decide to get married. The story of Scream 3 ends here. The next film in this franchise is Scream 4, which was released in the year 2011, almost 11 years later. The story of this film begins in the signature style where two teenagers are brutally killed. But in actuality, it is the story of the Stab franchise running inside the film. This is the scene from Stab 7 movie. In the original story, we are in the town of Woodsboro and Gale and Dewey have gotten married. Dewey becomes the town's deputy sheriff and Gale's career is over. Sydney has written a book based on her life experience. She's coming to Woodsboro for a book tour in a few days. She comes here to stay with her cousin Jill, her maternal aunt's daughter. One day the ghost face killer kills two teenagers named Jenny and Marnie. Sydney comes for a book tour on the same day. Blood and the killer's knife are found in her car. Everyone understands that the murders have started back since Sydney's return. Lots of people in town hate Sydney and tell her to go back because murders keep happening around Sydney. Jill and everyone else at the school is warned that the killings have begun again. Again curfew is imposed in the town. We are introduced to Jill's friends who are fans of Sydney. Their names are Trevor, Charlie, Robbie, Olivia, and Kirby. Trevor and Jill were dating before but now they have a fight. Whereas, Charlie likes Kirby. Robbie and Charlie are huge movie fans and run a movie club in Woodsboro Town. During the police investigation, Dewey refuses to involve Gail in all of this. Hence, Gail sets out on the investigation alone. Police protection is also provided in the neighborhood of Jill and Sydney. But despite this, 
the killer kills Olivia right in front of Jill and Sydney. After this, the killer calls Sydney and tells her that very soon he himself will come to kill her. Later in the story, Ghostface attacks Jill but is saved by Sydney. Gail, along with Charlie and Robbie, talks to the school's students as part of her investigation. Charlie theorizes that the killer is following the rules of horror remakes, and that the killer will likely strike at the Stabathon. Stabathon is a screening party held in a barn, where teenagers gather to binge watch all movies in the Stab franchise. They believe that now the killings will be of new age, so even in the movie, the killer will also upload all the killings on the internet. Meanwhile, the killer kills Rebecca, Sydney's publicist. Gail sneaks into the party to investigate and sets up the camera there. She keeps an eye on them outside so the killer can be caught. Killer cleverly removes the camera. Gail informs Dewey about this and asks him to reach there. The killer attacks Gail, and she notices that the killer is really trying to make videos of the murder and upload them on the internet. Meanwhile, Jill and Sydney are at home when the killer comes and kills the policeman, while Jill secretly goes to a party with Kirby. Sydney receives a call from the killer and sets out to find Jill as her life is in danger. At the party, Robbie is killed by a killer whose body is found by Kirby. By then Sydney had also reached there and she hid Jill. Kirby and Sydney lock themselves inside the house as the killer chases Sydney. Charlie asks them for help from outside. Kirby suspects Charlie, and before she can open the door, the killer attacks Charlie and ties him to a chair. The killer calls Kirby and asks her some horror movie-related questions, in exchange for Charlie being released. Sydney goes looking for Jill but she can't find her anywhere. Back to Kirby, she answers all the questions correctly and the killer lets Charlie go. But when she comes out and tries to free Charlie, then Charlie attacks her and reveals that he is the killer. He says that he waited for Kirby for a long time but she never understood his value. Charlie kills her and attacks Sydney. Sydney tries to run away for her life. But Jill catches her and reveals that she is the other killer. She grew up hearing about Sydney since childhood and she also wanted to be famous like her. That's why she called Sydney to meet her and committed all the murders along with Charlie. So in the end she too can also become a famous survivor like Sydney. She has uploaded the video of all the murders on the internet, and her plan is to blame Trevor. Jill then kills Sydney and Charlie and gives herself some minor injuries. So that everyone would think that Trevor had attacked her too. Dewey comes with his team and of course, Jill gets media attention too. But unfortunately, Sydney survives. Obviously, this has to happen how can Sydney die? Jill tries to kill her but this time she gets caught. Sydney once again kills Jill the killer. The story of Scream 4 ends here. The next film in this franchise is Scream 5, which was released in the year 2022, almost 11 years after Scream 4. The story of Scream 5 resumes in the town of Woodsboro. The last murder took place 11 years ago, and recently a horror movie called Stab 8 was made. The original fans are not liking it at all as a lot has been changed in it. In starting, we see Tara and she gets a call from Ghostface. He asks her about horror movies. Tara doesn't like the original Stab movie so the killer tries to kill her. But Tara's life is saved. In Modesto, Tara's estranged older sister Sam Carpenter is informed by Wes Hicks, one of Tara's friends, about the attack. She left Woodsboro several years ago. Sam is accompanied by her boyfriend Richie and she tells him all about Woodsboro's history. Something from Sam's past is related to these murders, so she left this town years ago. Sam gets a call from the killer, who taunts her about her past. We notice that Sam is having visions of Billy and is not in a good state of mind. Only then the killer attacks Sam, but she somehow saves herself. After an encounter with Ghostface at the hospital, Sam tells Tara that she has been dealing with hallucinations of Billy Loomis, who Sam learned as a teenager was her biological father. Sam's true parentage resulted in their parents' separation, and this is why Sam became estranged from Tara. On the other hand, the killer kills another man. Sam and Richie turn to retire Dewey to solve the murders. Gail is no longer with Dewey and has moved to New York. Sam tells everything to Dewey and he advises her to keep an eye on Tara's friends. Because like in the original Stab movies, the killer turns out to be one of the friends only. Tara's friend group, Wes, Amber Freeman, twins Chad and Mindy Meeks Martin, and Liv McKenzie. Here it is revealed that the man killed by the killer is Liv's ex-boyfriend Vince Schneider, 
who is Stu Macker's nephew. Mindy deduces that the killer is following the rules of a requel, a continuation of a narrative that derives heavily from the plot of the original. The suspicion of these people goes on Sam, due to which she gets very upset. By now Sydney and Gail have also reached Woodsboro. The killer next attacks Tara's ex-boyfriend Wes and his mother, Sheriff Judy Hicks, at their home. Here, let me tell you that Sheriff Judy was involved in capturing the killer Jill along with Deputy Dewey in the 2011 Scream 4. This means killer is really trying to make a prequel. Police gather at Wes' house and Tara is left alone in the hospital. So Sam reaches there with Dewey and Richie also turns up. The killer attacks Richie and Tara, but Sam and Dewey rescue them. In this scuffle, Dewey's life is lost. And after this incident, Sam wants to leave Woodsboro with Tara and Richie. Sydney and Gail warn her, but Sam does not listen to them. So Sydney secretly puts a tracker in her car to keep an eye on her. On the way, Tara doesn't find her inhaler so they stop at her friend Amber's house. Tara had left her spare inhaler here. A party is going on at Amber's house and seeing Tara, she goes to get her inhaler. But as we all know that the killer eventually reaches here and starts killing people one by one. Mindy is attacked by the killer, and Sam finds her bleeding. By now Amber also brings Tara and she thinks that Mindy was attacked by Sam. But then Liv comes there and has found her boyfriend's body outside. Everyone looks at each other with suspicion. That's when Amber shoots Liv and reveals that she is the real killer. Richie takes Sam and hides in the basement. Sam begins to worry about Tara. Richie suspects Tara because, in the original Stab movie, there were always two killers. But after listening to Richie, Sam starts to doubt him. She leaves him in the basement and comes out looking for Tara. Tara is locked in the cupboard by the killer, then Sam frees her. On the other hand, Gail and Sydney have reached here. They realize that this is Stu's old house. This means the killer has deliberately called them here. Stepping out of the house, Amber shoots at Gail. Sydney comes in looking for her, and a fight ensues between Amber and her. Just then Sam comes there and tries to kill Amber. But only then Richie attacks Sam from behind. Here the final plot of the film reveals that the real killers are Richie and Amber. Richie and Amber reveal they are fans of the Stab film series who met online. Disappointed in the trajectory taken with the most recent Stab 8, they decided to embark on a new killing spree, bringing back the original cast to provide new and improved source material for a future requel, Stab film and intend to frame Sam as the killer. So Richie pretends to be in love with Sam and forces her to return to Woodsboro. Till then Tara arrives here and attacks Amber. Gail and Sydney team up to kill Amber and Sam confront Richie. Sam finally accepts her father's vision and kills Richie like a serial killer. With this, the story of Scream 2022 comes to an end. Now Scream 6 will come after this in a few days. I will bring its explanation well in my channel. Friends, this was the complete explanation of the Scream franchise which we have come to know in short. And we have only understood the important plot point. Although there is no deep theory in the film, but in short we can say that it is a pure slasher horror film. Basically Sidney Prescott has been the main character of this franchise, around which killings happen. Every time some movie fan or psycho killer gets inspired by the actual Woodsboro murder and commits murder. And in the end, Sydney and her team confront them. Gail and Dewey are also an important part of the story, but you already know that Dewey has died in Scream 5. Now in Scream 6, it will be interesting to see whether Sydney and Gail survive or not. Along with this, it is also to be seen whether Scream 6 will be the last film or whether there will be more films after that. So that's all in today's video. I hope you like this video.